Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just uh, doing a repot and thought I'd bring y'all along. Didn't really have anything going on big this week for the YouTube channel. So thought maybe this will do. Great intro. That's how to grab people's attention. Okay, go ahead and buckle up for maybe it's a nice medium time. What's going on here is I have this metanella in the back that needs to be repotted badly for a few different reasons. This is a plant that generally has grown pretty prolifically for me and flowered very prolifically for me. Metanellas, if you don't know, also called Malaysian orchids. There are several different types that you can grow. There are epiphytes, and typically we think epiphytes, we think of aeroids and orchids, bromeliads, not something that looks more like a shrub, right? But that's what this is. They get very large, according to the internet, up to like three, four meters. Maybe they do. The biggest one I've ever seen personally was maybe seven or eight feet tall and about that wide. They get big. And I'm sure in their natural habitat would probably double in that size. So sure, three, four meters, somewhere in there. In the home, I would expect four to six feet, something like that. Being an epiphyte, a tropical moisture, heat loving epiphyte, it's important to make sure to get them potted up into an appropriate mix. It's been a troop of a plant. I've had this one for several years. I would like to go ahead and give it the potting mix that it deserves. It's still in its nursery container. These are one of those plants where if you pick it up from the nursery and it's doing well, I just say don't, why, why poke it? Why mess with it? I'm doing great up until the last few months where I haven't been getting flowers out of it. The growth has slowed. A lot of that is partially the time of year to an extent, this is a simulated environment in here. It's warm, it's fairly humid, has grow lights, and it has always grown and flowered for me in the winter time when I've had this indoors. It's not doing that this year. I'm getting some crispy edges. That's just to be expected. There's a 10,000 watt heater up here on the ceiling, and I've done my best to redirect the flow so it's not blasting on the plant, but it's still, there's, there's gonna be some spots. Air comes out of there very dry, blows it on the water helps humidify things. That and just keeping the plants watered has been doing a great job keeping things humid in here. And I have a humidifier thingy down in there. Okay, so there's the background. Beautiful plant. Three different pot sizes here. I like this one because it's a square. It's not as likely to fall over, but I don't think that this would be much of an upgrade for that plant. So probably going to go with one of these two right here. Being an epiphyte, they don't necessarily need something that's deep. Right, so this one, maybe I won't go with that one. I'm thinking this pot right here might be the winner. So they don't need something deep to root down into and uh, this plant is very wide. So having a wider pot will hopefully keep it from tipping over because right now the whole thing, it just wants to fall over. If it weren't leaning against the edge of this pond here, it would definitely be slipping and sliding. Here in my rusty bucket, I've got some ocean forest potting mix. A very nice, organically rich, well-drained potting mix. That's really all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be ocean forest. That's just what I have laying around right now. And then here's where things get more interesting. To this blend, I'm going to go about 30% steroid mix. This is a combination of the newt mix, common one. It's inoculated with rooting agents. Chunky perlite, there's some sphagnum in there. Not much, just a little bit. Coconut chip and all that fun stuff. It's just a blend that's going to help make sure that the potting mix stays nice and airy because like I said, it's an epiphyte they're not going to want things to be compacted down around their roots. Want lots of oxygen to move around, but still some moisture retention because this, they are very thirsty plants. I have to water the crap out of this thing. That's another reason I'm repotting it because I shouldn't have to be watering it quite as often as I have been. Oh, goodness. So much talking wasn't even recording. You didn't miss much. I reached in here and I did this three times. That's about it. That's all there was to it. And then I corrected myself when I was like, eh, 30%. Could be excessive. Let's start with what's gonna be more like 10%. I want this to drain well, but I still want it to hold on to some moisture. Other options, you don't have to use an aeroid blend to loosen up your soil and get oxygen flow, right? You can use LECA, you can use some nice chunky perlite. Sand always works well, but I would still try and have things that are of different sizes and densities. I like to have a variety of chunky size things in my soil blends. This doesn't even look all that different. So I'm gonna say that's probably perfect. That's about what I want. I wanna squeeze it, it's not going to hold together. That should be the case with any all-purpose potting mix that we're using, period. No matter what we're trying to plant up, don't want the 
soil to be clumping and sticking together. For the medanellas, it's just more important to be on top of that so that air can move around those roots. I might go ahead and grab another bag and bulk this up because I also have a ficus that I need to repot and there are also some philodendrons. And this is basically going to be the exact same mix I would use for all of those plants. Since I'm here, may as well go ahead and bulk this up some. I feel like I'm cheating when I'm using ocean forest because it's already such a fantastic potting soil. It has the earthworm castings and back guano. It says all that right there. Organically rich enough that you really shouldn't even have to add any fertilizers or anything to the plants or to the soil for about three months after you pot up your plants. I thought I saw something crawling around in here, which would have been weird, so let's open that bag up. So one, two, three. I think that should be good. Plants I would use this with would be, well, the metanella, but there probably aren't a ton of people who are growing metanellas. The uh, shrill type philodendrons, not all of them, but a lot of them, like the Prince of Orange, Macaulay's, the Red Congo, the Birkin, even Monsteras, the, well, not all Monsteras, there are a lot of Monsteras. Monstera deliciosa, ficus, depending on the type of ficus, elastica, and then just your typical like Benjamin's, ficus lyrata, maybe even my crotons. I feel like I would use this blend with a lot of my tropical plants. Maybe with some adjustments made to the amount of chunkiness or aeration, I should say, that's being amended depending on the plant. So with a Deliciosa, I might add some more bark chip or chunky perlite or leca, whatever the case, all the above to make sure it's breathing better. As long as the soil blend is airy, pretty much everything else comes down to our growing conditions and how we take care of our plants. I'm gonna go ahead and just do one more handful because I would like to be able to see more of what I'm putting in here. Pushing 15 to 20% on what I'm adding in here, I don't know. Vanillas are not all that picky about their potting mix, but I'm being more thorough here, making sure that there's some extra drainage, more for plants like the ficus. Ficus are plants that will throw a fit and rot out very quickly if they don't have just the right amount of airflow and drainage in their potting mix. I'm gonna be repotting my elasticas and this guy up here. It needs a new pot. I think that that should be good. Now I just have to figure out how I'm gonna repot that big plant over here and keep everything in frame. I probably won't. I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, think I'm gonna be able to make this work. This is going to be a perfect pot size. I hadn't even realized that this container is already sort of a squat shape to it and it's lower down in there. I don't know what's going on with the roots of this one. Needs to be able to pick up the plant and have a good look in there. They look pretty good to me. It's not overly root bound, not seeing critters or pests running around on the inside. And the soil blend that's in there looks fairly similar to what I've mixed up in the container. That's probably something I care more about than anything else. Because it's important to be able to maintain a consistency between the two soil blends so that when I water the plant, the water isn't rushing away from the root ball. Things to be nice and homogenous between the two. The main thing that stands out to me when looking at the blend that this is in is that it's not in a chunky mix. That's not really surprising, is it? When we buy something from a nursery, I don't generally expect for it to be in a chunky mix. Typically just assume that they're going to be in something that's more close to an all-purpose mix, which a metanella Really, as long as there's enough drainage, I think that they can be okay being grown like that. As long as maybe you're more of a seasoned or intuitive gardener and you know what's going on with watering and how to pay close attention to not overdo things. And a lot of it goes back to where we live, right? If I were in uh, say like the Pacific Northwest where I would expect things to be more humid and more cool and on the temperate side, I'd be adding in a lot more material to make sure that this is really chunky and drains really, really well. I, this is going to drain really, really well, and it is chunky. Where there's more humidity, there's more proneness to rot, or not even Pacific Northwest. Down in Florida, it's really humid. You probably wanna go something that's going to drain even better than this. If you live in the Southwest or in SoCal, just places with drier air than something that holds on to some more moisture, probably a good idea. Ooh, citrus. Same principle. I just should have mentioned that when I was talking about the other plants like the Monstera and the Ficus and this thing, Philodendrons. It's gonna be the same deal, right? Need really good drainage. 
but having some moisture holding capacity is good and extra organic richness in the soil. That's why I'm using the Ocean Forest. And that's just a few of the ingredient lists on the Ocean Forest. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. You can do all that on your own. You don't have to buy something pre-made like that. It's just winter time and most of the nurseries here are closed. So instead of having lots of containers around and bins to fill so I can blend up my own mixes, I'm just using something pre-made in the long run just saves me some time good thing i doubled up on that blend. i think i would have used just about everything that was in this bucket if i hadn't done that yeah that's better i think this should be good with this blend for the next couple of years figure it while i'm over here and i have this plant where i can reach it be a good idea to go ahead and clean out the dead make sure things are nice and open it wouldn't be an awful time to go in and just do a full-on cutback to encourage the whole thing to bush out, but it's got some buds on it. I'm thinking I don't want to do that. I don't want to disturb the root mass or do too much to it if it's about to flower. That's a catch-22, right? We know if you cut the plants back, then you're going to encourage the roots to push out and encourage more branching and fullness on the inside, but it's also going to remove the buds because it's the plant that blooms off of its tips. It's also a plant that blooms pretty prolifically, so if I were to do a cutback now, then I would imagine it'll be blooming by May, June. I, don't know. I, I just, I kind of want to leave it. I don't mind it being nice and open. Something else I've noticed about the Metanellas that has been really nice is that sometimes they do get bare on the inside, but usually when I move them back out during the summertime, they flush back out and get really full on their own. You can even see where it started to push out some new growth on the inside without needing much. In Come on, camera, why, why won't you focus? There we go. There they are, little leaves. On just about all the stems, there's something coming out from them. But also the more tips you have, the more flowers you have with plants that bloom off of their tips. So probably a good idea to give it a cut back. I don't think I'm going to. I would rather give it a cut back in the spring when I move it outside and it has natural sunlight, warmer temperatures and all that fun stuff to get it moving. I don't even like to really repot this time of year, even though I'm in a simulated environment, right? Everything in here is artificial. So it is warm, it is humid, there are grow lights. It's still just, it's never the same as the plant actually being outside. And yes, I will I'll water it in. I'm just, it doesn't, I'm not gonna water it in on the table. I still have to walk around all my lights and <laughs> camera equipment that I have all over the place over here and get it over there back onto that table. I'll water it when I get it set back over there. Yeah, this is nice. I don't usually repot plants this large in the grow space because it, well, it's, it's too cumbersome. There's not a lot of room to work with here. But the dang thing just wouldn't stand upright on its own, and that wasn't working for me. It was making it hard to water it. Leaves were curling, like I mentioned, it's having to water it seemingly constantly, about twice as often as I have to water everything else. Those are all the signs that a plant needs to be repotted. But it's done. Looking forward to seeing how it responds to being repotted. It shouldn't skip a beat. I really didn't have to mess with its roots at all. I don't know if I really talked about looking for signs of root rot. I don't think I did, but I didn't see anything that would indicate root rot. The soil was still looking nice and loose on the inside. There are a few spots that maybe it was a little bit muddy and mucky and that's stuff you just chip away with your fingers. Didn't want to go in and completely rip apart the entire root ball. Something I get asked about when I repot larger epiphytes, mainly like my Monstera back there, the Thai, about why I still like to use an organically rich potting mix, why it's a good idea to use an organically rich potting mix or aeroid mix. Since they're epiphytes, right, they're supposed to be pulling their nutrients from the air and whatever is in the water and stuff that collects around the leaf bases and growth bases. Epiphytes do typically still pull in some minerals from their roots. It's just that they're not reliant on their roots for all of their minerals. They pull in moisture and they are very important for the anchoring of the plant. And something that is key and really important with root growth, whether it's an, did I just say growth? <laughs> root growth? Root growth, to have good root growth is to have good fauna, having a good place for beneficial bacteria and fungi to grow. That is what gets roots growing, even with epiphytes. What they're doing to break things down in order to release minerals to the plant, not necessarily as important, but having a good system down below for things to stay moist and be able to have a good symbiosis. Having that to break things down isn't necessarily just to get nutrients in there to the plant, it's to help keep things nice and clean around the roots of the plants too. If you have a good fauna of all that good stuff in there, things will get basically digested that you don't want building up around the roots of the plants. Things that can lead to rot basically, that's all, that's all that is. Kind of like gut health. 
and all that stuff. Sort of the same principle there. Yeah, it's not necessary about the organically richness that I'm thinking of so that I can feed the plant and the plant take in lots of minerals from its surrounding soil. It's more so just for healthy root growth and to make sure that there are things being broken down that can be released up to the plant and get nice healthy root growth. Yeah, that, that's it. And this is not true of all epiphytes. This is a terrestrial epiphytic plant. This is something that's going to be growing on the forest floor where there's lots of organic decaying matter building up around the base of the plant and it's anchored down into a very loose but very moist, rich substrate. Whereas something like a Tillandsia that's up in a tree, not the same situation. Okay, that's enough. I've rambled enough. I don't even know what the point of this video was. It was just repotting a plant and talking about potting plants up. That, that's all. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. What are some things you like to add to your soil blends? There are tons of options out there. I only named like what was on the top of my head. Are you growing metanillas? How are you liking them? They're one of my favorites, especially when, when they're looking good. This one's sad. It's gonna look better in no time though. I'm not worried about it. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.